Hey, it is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a re really key important concept and topic when it comes to healing through narcissistic abuse or psychopathic abuse, and that is being aware of the discipline required. The discipline required meaning to be um, from the wor root word of discipline meaning to be a disciple of. So to be a di disciple of and to be a disciplinarian basically means that you have the self-enforcement and self-reliance and self-trust mechanism to work within to keep your habits and behaviors on course and on track in alignment with your goal, your vision, or your desire looking forward. So when we talk about healing through narcissistic abuse, psychopathic abuse, it's very important to understand one of the key ingredients is that of d discipline, meaning keeping up with a routine, keeping up with a structure, keeping up with and enforcing those. Not only so it gives shape, but it helps you to eliminate self-doubt. Um, because when, especially when we are talking about the habit or kicking the narcissist habit, um, when we talk about a relationship that might have been traumatizing, really significant, um, very influential, very just sort of like a formative relationship, really helped to mold you and condition and program you into the person that you are today. You know, it's very important to understand and I think kind of like take a reverence, take respect and take appreciation for the impact and influence of certain relationships, be it on the positive or be it on the negative. And sometimes when you are going no contact in doing meditation, doing the work, watching the privacy of these videos, and you focus on kicking the narcissist habit, you know, you will also then realize and become, it'll become more clear to you, more in tune, more in shape. It'll become more apparent, more aware, more real, and more of like, okay, I get it and I understand and I can see it now in my life, peace and harmony. That understanding of the role of the relationship and its bearing on your life will come to pass and will come to show in where it fits in your life, in the journey of your life. And oftentimes people who have been so traumatized, they don't even have it as like their journey. They feel that they are used by life. They don't take ownership of an I am. They feel that they have just been recycled by bad people, by bad media, by negative situations, then they're just a victim or, you know, they're just part of the S-H-S-H-O-W, you know, that they feel that they are the bottom dwellers, you know, that they don't, that their idea of a good life is not valid. Um, it is not right. It is not hold any water. It doesn't, it is invalid. So a lot of people have been invalidated by a narcissist or a psychopath. In invalidated, meaning not given the op opportunity or even option to voice and be your I am, your authentic self, and really in alignment and close in conjunction with that reality. So for a lot of people, if they had these dynamics, which then becomes a relationship habit, as I'm setting forth, you know, the narcissist habit, almost like an addiction, almost like an alcohol, almost like a drug, almost like a downer, an upper, a substance that can be abused, food, gambling, um, you know, all that a sundry ways it takes form in the human population is to understand that these relationships, because they are so highly charged emotionally and oftentimes in the negative that they take you know forbearance and dominance over all others so all other relationships don't really seem to stick they don't have the glue they don't have you know it's not all there 
for you in the relationship. So, you know, the other relationships don't seem to have the strength or the potency, or they might just seem to be insignificant, but you don't really have true perspective of them as such, or what I will call as true appreciation of them as such, until you begin to go no contact, see the forest for the trees. In other words, see the individual might of each tree rather than just saying, oh, here's just a big hardwood forest. You know, here's a big rainforest. Here's a big, you know, tundra, you know, and, and not just giving it a blanket, but seeing the for you know, seeing, you know, seeing the forest for the trees and the individual impact of that individual and sort of how it kind of makes up the whole picture for you. And so it's important to understand that a discipline is required to kick the narcissist habit. Um, it can become, you know, and why does it become so habitual? It becomes automatic. It becomes what you always go to. It's kind of like a, a law of the universe. You know, the water wants to seek the lowest, you know, the lowest level. I mean, that's just the flow of, of, of nature. And so really sort of the emotions are um, a similar way, you know, in, in that, so the emotions kind of want to go back to the most pressing, the most life persevering, you know, for you. And so if this is like an addiction, it's just like some people who wake up and they want to have a cigarette, they want to have a drink, they want to have a gamble, they want to have a 12 pack of donuts, whatever it is, it becomes like a compulsion. And, you know, we talk about then what happens after this happens. Then you have, you know, you have, you know, brainwashing getting setting in. You've got gaslighting setting in. You have dissociation or disidentification with your own happiness and wellness setting in. You begin to self-injure, become self-aggressive or self-sabotage, you know, either through negative self-talk, um, getting yourself into emotional trouble, financial trouble, professional trouble, again, you know, you're satisfying that addiction, you know, that you're allowing that addiction to say, here you go, that's right, you are a victim, and let me give you another situation that will prove that to you, in case you had any guess, here you go again, you just called them back, and now you feel like crap, or now you just ate all that, and now you feel disgusting, or now you just thought all those thoughts, and you can't get yourself out of it, you know, these are negative habits. These are a result or symptom of the narcissist addiction that then becomes a, an, an identity in an I am. If you allow it to run away with it itself, it's like the crazy train, Ozzy Bourne, or whatever this name was, Ozzy Osbourne, crazy train. You know, are you going to stay on that crazy train? At some point, you go, you know what, that, you know, I, I, I rode the ride you know, I appreciate it now for what it was. So part of breaking the narcissist addiction is understanding why it is an addiction, why, you know, the cause that, you know, has created the effect, but why it has such significance in your life. Oftentimes because it has taken, um, you know, life, you know, um, life or death meaning significance to you. In other words, you have interpreted or received the relationship in that way. You have felt that to be true. You have felt that to be your I am. You have felt that to be so. You have, you have, and then you have repeated that and validated that foundation, that presumption, that you know that you have to live in that fight or flight. So if you, in the very beginning, the beginning of the beginning of the beginning, like the nucleus of the cell before it split into two, you know, if you remember from your biology you know, talking about the proliferation and growth of cells, you know, it's like the nucleus of it and really the, the cell before it became divided from itself, which is kind of like what happens. You end up sort of becoming a little bit divided from yourself, um, a divided or, you know, fragment or part um, or aspect or facet, you know, that you had to maybe put up your dukes. You had to, you know, you had to fight. You had to cry. You had to become quiet. You had to become complacent. You had to become lazy. You had to become a follower. You had to become an admirer. You had to become a an addict. You know, um, you had to become. You had to engage in that intense, you know, cycle of tension and release that narcissist abuse is. 
and then a reassessment of self in order to adapt and adjust to that, that maladaptive relationship, if you will. So it becomes, you become um, responsive. And oftentimes the meaning is that of life significance. You know, I will make it or I will not make it. You know, I can survive or I cannot survive. So there is a sort of a dependency um, that goes on. And then, you know, kind of oftentimes maybe overvaluing or over idealizing the narcissist. This is like a lot of information. <laughs> um, you know, so you then over idealize them and they become sort of this really shining star. And then you feel that you're nothing but, you know, dust in the wind. You know, they're the shining star. And if you can, you know, be enough dust to circle around the, sh you know, the star enough that maybe you'll, it'll all gel together and then you'll become a comet in their galaxy or, or whatever is just sort of the sort of fantasy that, you know, that goes on in the back recesses of the mind while this relationship is being created or formed or solidified and made into an actual structure, an actual personality, you know, uh, series of, of pieces that go together and then create your identity, you know, what you would call me, you know, your, my personality, you know, who you refer to as me and then what you've had to do. And oftentimes, if a large degree of this is as a reaction to others that are negative, fearful, intimidating, or demanding in that sort of violationary way where they violate boundaries, you know, it's one directional talk, you're nothing but an object or an extension of them, then you don't have any option to have an I am. You don't have any choice. You don't have any, you know, um, experience then of such. You don't get the chance or you can't make the chance, you know, depending on those dynamics. So it becomes an addiction. It becomes, you know, and then it's, it's well known in studies that emotions of fear or anxiety, you know, those heightened arousal states will rise faster in people, which means they will hook quicker, like people will jump on that emotion train, if you will, and be angry about it for days, be fearful about it for months, you know, be freaked out about it for decades, you know, they'll live in that paranoia, that fear, you know, they will remain in that because it becomes the fastest rising emotion. It's kind of like if you were a surfer, you know, you're not checking out the waves, you're just like, ah, there's the monster wave, man, I'm just going to grab this. And even though there's other better, more beautiful waves a little bit further out, if you had only gone and checked and they go from blue to green and they're big and, you know, and you can ride, you know, the crest or get right in there and roll it for a couple, you know, miles or whatever, you know, it's kind of like that you're, you're riding that first tidal wave, right? When you're getting your surfboard out to the ocean, if you've ever seen like those people who are surfers. I've never done it, but it looks pretty cool, you know, but it's, it's kind of like they're looking for that ultimate wave. And so you have to reevaluate this with yourself and select your ultimate wave. You know, you have to, you know, is it okay for me? You know, um, to what degree am I being run by these explosive emotions? To what degree am I being run then from these reactive emotions that were based on a gradient or a judging from this individual. In other words, what they deemed acceptable. They wanted me to get a hair, you know, from everything. They wanted me to get a hair transplant. They wanted me to um, dress like a nun. They wanted me to grow my hair. They wanted me to cut my hair. They wanted me to dye my hair black. Whatever it is, all their presumptions. And probably if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, you are going to give get a, a preponderance in a large amount of feedback from the narcissist about what you should do, how you should be, um, how you should wear things, um, how you should, you know, talk, how you should eat, how you should sleep, how you should live your life. You're probably going to have gotten a lot of feedback on the negative from them. These can be very highly critical individuals. And you know, and so if you have then found yourself saying, oh yeah, to survive, I need to become, you know, so you might have had to then fraction off, um, you know, fragment off, fracture off and 
um, facet off, like a splinter or a segment of yourself to become that, which oftentimes can be voluntarily or willful. Yeah, you want them to be happy or yeah, that's a great idea. You just help with my personal growth and we're growing together. Ain't that cool? Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get a whoop whoop? You know, that is the good thing when it's like, yeah, do that, you know, and then it's dynamic and it's got some good play to it and it's fair. No one is getting hurt. It is fun. You know, it's never fun when someone gets hurt. And that's the problem is that the narcissist are those people who are in pain. So they cause pain to others. You know, they are wounded. So they will wound others. You have to become like a healer and then heal yourself and then help to heal others. Um, but anyway, getting back on track is to say that um, those um, those heightened um, emotions, so they rise very quickly. So you can get a lot of tailwind, if you will, on those. You can get a lot of drift. You can get a lot of, you know, a lot of people riding that wave, if you will. Um, just like, you know, you see in the news or the narcissist might kind of cause their sort of own ecosystem, if you will, around them. You know, they, they love to control the emotional weather right around them. You know, I mean, you could call them, you know, tornado. I mean, you could call them, you know, lightning storm, whatever it is. I mean, sometimes they create a whole atmosphere and a weather system around them with people. Some people call them flying monkeys, their entourage, their posse, their supply, their supporters, um, their people who are, their, you know, um, their, um, their, uh, whatever it's called, you know, their followers or, you know, whatever it is, is called, you know, their, um, their click, and then you have to fight to be in it or you're out. And then where do you go? Who do you become? You know, so it becomes all these questions. So, you know, you have to realize that it sets up as an addiction because of the degree of importance and the, the degree oftentimes of the fight or flight which is then triggered in you. And then that begins to run the show rather than the show running the emotions. So it becomes flipped. The switch becomes flipped. You know, you're, um, you know, you're then just sort of running on this sort of autopilot in your life. You will feel out of control. You will feel disrespected. You will feel, you know, ungainful in your life. You will feel you're, you're imbalanced, going nowhere, no friends, no money, no, you know, no future, no miracles, you know, no magic, you, you know, everything can become downcast until you realize you have to get into the discipline that takes to get off and detox off of the narcissist addiction. Realize what it feel, feels like uniquely for you. Does it feel like a pressure? Does it feel like a pushing? Does it feel like, you know, you're armoring up? Does it feel like you're smiling? Does it feel like you're dancing? I mean, what is the narcissist addiction? Make sure you become aware of what that feels like for you so you know when you go into addiction mode. What it feels like when you're going into addiction mode. Here I go. I'm about to launch off into a narcissist addiction mode. And so find yourself where you're at and take your own temperature of where you are at on the gauge of that and say, wow, peace and harmony. I am still sort of addicted. I'm still thinking about them. I'm caught up in the ruminating thoughts. I'm wondering if I made the right decision. Maybe I should have just changed this. Maybe I should have changed that. Maybe they are all I have, you know, maybe they are all I have. Maybe they are all I've got. That's all that's um, available to me. You know, maybe you're doing that, you know, that narc addiction self-talk. Quit the narc addiction self-talk. Stop keeping yourself in their trough where they can just come and feed on you at will. If you are keeping yourself as narcissist supply, you're basically saying, yep, narcissist abuser, come back and have at me whenever you want, whenever you will, for how long and for how much you want because the door is wide open. You have not locked it down. You have not made the commitment. You have not made the 100% I've got this yet, peace and harmony. You are still, you know, keeping, you know, and it sure it's a process, but the degree to which you are still entertaining those thoughts and thinking that they might change, things might be getting better. Oh, maybe they're done with me and now he's just, or she is just going to let it go and we're getting on to the good stuff. You are again playing with 
fire. I mean, you are just, you know, and you're going, it's going to be unattended. It can just run like wildfire through your life. And then you're going to feel like, well, where's all the work that I did? And why ain't I feeling better? Why isn't my life going anywhere? You feel stag stagnant and stale, you know? Um, and so, you know, really you, you have to be willing to have the discipline to stay the course. You have to do the uncomfortable. You have to do the unpleasant. Like you saw me on the video yesterday with the mask, you know, bundling up, you know, we're, you're everything. It's a new world. Okay. You have to understand it is a new world and not just like, Oh, it's a new world. It's like, it is a new world period. End of story. It happened overnight. It happened in the blink of an eye. It happened in the poof. It, it, it is, and it, it is here. So the sooner you can embrace it, you can be an early, you know, and not jump on those wrong waves, which take you off into some place that you don't, God know where you're going to wash up at, you know, along with all the rubber tires, you know, you don't want to end up on that beach strewn over somewhere. You want to direct your course. You have to be able to direct the tailwinds. You have to be able to have just like in a hot air balloon, you have to be able to get the lever to your own heat. Turn it down and let it float, amp it up and catch the next right wind. You know, you have to get the discipline of self leverage. You have to, and this is a growing process. I mean, this is like one of the biggest journeys and experiences you're ever going to have in your life. I mean, it's just, it is what it is and it will take on new meaning, new levels. It'll take you to new heights and new relevancies. And then you'll start connecting the dots and you'll start being able to really connect and you'll begin to have the faith. You really will then begin to understand the importance of all the various emotional states. That's what I talk about. And I think this whole pandemic is all about the big, you know, the big G, the big divine, you know, the one who is remains nameless, but we try to name, you know, that guy is saying, Hey guys, it's time for me. You'd appreciate your father. You know, it's like, do you see, I'm not even going there right now, but that's the message for me. And it's always been about that. But anyway, I mean, I, I, I like anyway. So, so anyway, um, the, the, the understanding is that it's going to take discipline. And so even though it might make you uncomfortable, just like, you know, dealing with this whole new world, you know, um, you know, the, um, shelter in place, the, you know, um, shutting down of the businesses, small businesses, it'll be very important in the next four to six weeks, you know, to see how things go. And it, 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 it holds true just for kind of keeping in line with that. You know, you have to have the discipline. You saw me yesterday going out with the mask bundled up, you know, it's just like, you know, you have to be able to adapt, you know, it might not be comfortable to wear this mask, then find one that is comfortable, find one that you do like, find one that is, you know, going to work that's handmade, begin to make them yourself, begin to study them, you know, begin to start a mask making business. I mean, are you innovative? You know, it's, this is kind of like, it's an opportune time. Things are kind of, you know, at the mellow right now, gentle waves, if you will, maybe while you're watching this video, hopefully, and you're concentrating in the privacy of this video, but realize, you know, there are, you know, the people who are innovative, um, and who are self disciplined and can enforce that just like it, it becomes important to stay the course after that narcissist addiction and sort of breaking that you have to sometimes get uncomfortable. You have to do things that will help you to protect you. Just like wearing the mask, it'll protect you. Just like, you know, being disciplined, understanding, um, and reflecting on the impact of these relationships and how it has allowed you to either become stronger and brighter, or it's caused you to become weaker and dimmer. You know, what has been the impact to a certain degree, you can evaluate it on such. So, you know, be willing to understand a little bit more about the, 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 the interplay of the, a narcissist addiction in your life and see how that could have been created and evaluate for yourself to degree to which you're still on that or to the degree to which you would like to back off of it. You are in control. If you make a conscious decision, you are halfway there. 
It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Be willing to understand the pattern of narcissist addiction in your life. To what degree has it been sort of a, a buffer or a crutch from getting you to become self-reliant, beginning to see the true goodness and your next future moving forward where it's sort of blocked that or eclipsed it from view? Because oftentimes addictions are meant to sort of, you know, keep you apart from that. And the truth and that reality is so magnanimous, so strong, that oftentimes people stay in the addiction. So I encourage you to stay the course, keep disciplined, enforce your recovery dates, rec enforce your emotions, working on, you know, really cultivating certain emotional states that are important for you. Uh, like, um, you know, moments of reflection, moments of dreaming, you know, daydreaming, uh, moments of reflecting on what is really meaningful to you and being able to take, you know, time for that, doing your recovery journal, your recovery writing in the morning, your recovery gift and your, your, your priming and your resensitization of all of your senses around you. To what degree have the reactions in your life been as a result of something that was not in your best interest, a, an addiction to a narcissist and sort of what aftermath has it created? Be willing to see to what degree you can strengthen and feel stronger and more stable. Maybe it's everything from, you know, how you eat to how you um, create your interior design to how you create your career to how you create your hobbies to everything. It really will have um, a, a vast and really um, just sort of broad effect on your life. So be willing to see how that is and be willing to also ask yourself, to what degree can I let that go a little bit and see if that's okay, see if I'm okay with it. As you let it go and tone down the addiction, you'll find that you're in control, cool, calm, composed, and you are living in peace and harmony. And you have really just a living by inspiration. Trust yourself. Have a beautiful day.